Hello, and welcome to my next executive series video. Our topic is process validation. Specifically, we're going to focus on process development. Aaron Snyder here for Quality Systems Explained, where we make quality systems simple for you. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button to get all the new content we're putting out. Check out the status bar below for our agenda and stick around to the end to get those bonus questions. Our topic, process development, comes directly from two different parts of the regulation in the standard. Those are 820.30H, design transfer, and 820.75, process validation. Within 1345, that is sections 7.3.8 and 7.5.6. For more information on process development, look at the GHTF document, which we have a link for in the notes for this video description. Process development in five words. Develop process parameters and controls. When we have a process, we have to understand how that process works. We have to understand how the various parts of that process impact the specifications, the safety and the effectiveness of our medical device. To do that, we utilize risk management, we utilize process development. When we start looking at a process, we have to understand all of the variation that may be within that process. The best way to do this is to analyze the six M's. Man, method, materials, measurement, machine, and environment. Once we understand all the various sources of variation, we now need to look at the actual process parameters themselves. Some of the process parameters will have no impact on the process output, while others will have an impact, and then again others will have a critical impact. This is where we get the terminology critical process parameters, CPPs, critical to quality, parameters or CTQs or CQAs, critical quality attributes. Companies use these various acronyms different ways. Just make sure that within your quality system that they are clearly defined. We need to identify all process parameters that impact the process output. Once we have those process parameters, next we have to analyze those to find the proven acceptable range and the nominal operating range for those parameters the PAR, and the NOR, respectively. As we analyze both of those ranges, we may also do edge of failure testing for our process. In order to find the PAR and the NOR, we may use the design of experiments, a DOE, Taguchi methods, response surface modeling, or other tools that will help us understand the various combinations of those process parameters and establish the worst case conditions. If our process happens to have software in it, we will do separate development activities for that software, separate protocol and report, which will help us prepare for our IQ and OQ later on. The better we understand the variation, the more robust our process development activities are, the more likely we are to later on have a successful OQ and PQ. So how do I know this is working? Well, first, I understand all of my process parameters and I've established ranges for those process parameters. Second, I utilize risk management to highlight my CPPs, my CTQs, or my CQAs, whatever I call them within my company. Third, my OQs and my PQs rarely fail. And then finally, within each OQ and PQ, I don't have a lot of deviations. So how do I know it's not working? Well, first, my process engineers, they're just guessing at what the process parameters are. Second, there's no structured process development activity. I'm not capturing what I'm doing to develop my process parameters. Third, my OQ, my PQs, they repeatedly fail and have major deviations in them. And now for the three bonus questions. First, how do we document our process development activities? Second, when we start planning for our process validations, do we include time for process development activities? And then finally, how often do we complete our validations on time without major deviations? Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment. Send any questions to me at Q 
qms.jedi at gmail.com. This is Aaron Snyder from Quality Systems Explained, making quality systems simple for you.